Hello and welcome to Poseidon Tech. This is a rack from a real installation. So in today's episode I will show you how to make the initial setup of these Unify network products. Let's start. This is patch panel number 1, where I have terminated the network cables from the installation. So network plugs, access points, IP cameras etc. are terminated here. For more details, please watch my tutorial about terminating patch panel. This is a network cable manager to hide the cable spaghetti. This is a Unify 24 ports managed PoE switch with two SFP ports that I will use to interconnect my switches using fiber patch cables. A second patch panel, another cable manager, a second Unify 24 ports managed PoE switch, and this is the Unify Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus with rack mount accessory. Unify Cloud Key is an integrated computer with software Unify Controller. Unify Cloud Key allows us to configure and monitor our Unify devices. This is the Unify Security Gateway Pro, which will be the main router, where I will connect the two VDSL lines from the modems of the Internet Service Provider. Let's start with the connections. First, I will connect the USG Pro with the Unify switch using this green patch cord. I will connect the cloud key with the Unify switch. I will also connect one of my modems into one one port of the USB port. I will use a fiber patch cable for the interconnection of the two switches. So this is the one meter fiber patch cable from Ubiquiti. It is also available in two and three meters length. It supports multi gigabit data rates up to 10 gigabits. This is the SFP module. Let's remove the rubber cover to see how it looks. First, I will remove the rubber covers from the SFP ports and fiber patch cord. The SFP module only fits in one way. and I will push it all the way in until it clicks. I will do the same and for the other end. So, I connected SFP port 1 of the first switch to SFP port 1 of the second switch. We are ready to turn everything on. Wait for a while for the devices to boot up. Ok, everything is ready. The first step before starting with the configuration is to note the IP address of the cloud key from the cloud key display screen. Open a browser and type the IP address of the cloud key. Select Manage Cloud Key. Log in with default username UBNT and default password UBNT. Change the default password. Press Submit. Click on Configure. Upgrade the firmware. Select Manage Cloud Key. Sign in. This is the web interface of the Cloud Key. Performance tab shows real-time graphs displaying the usage of system resources like CPU, temperature, memory and hard disk. Under Controllers tab you can find the Unify Network Controller for configuring and monitoring Unify Network devices and the Unify Protect Controller for configuring and monitoring Unify cameras. 
Under Network tab, you can modify the network settings. Under Settings tab, you can adjust time settings, update the firmware, etc. Click on Management Portal. Click on Setup Unify Network. Give a name for your controller. Click Next. Sign in with your Ubiquiti account and click Next. Disable automatically optimize my network. Click Next. Give a name for your Wi-Fi and the password. I recommend you to enable combine 2 GHz and 5 GHz Wi-Fi network names into one. Click Next. Click Next. Click Finish. Update controller software. I prefer black theme, so I will change it. Go to Devices. Here you will find all unified devices that are connected in your network. Go to Settings. Give a site name for your installation. Click on Apply Settings. Go to Networks. Let's edit the default LAN network. Here you can adjust the IP address of the USG Pro and define the DHCP range. According to your needs, you can leave the default settings or change them. For example, I'm gonna need more IP addresses, so I will change subnet to 23 and I will have automatically more than 500 IP addresses. The gateway IP is gonna be the IP address of the USG Pro. I will change also the DHCP range. DHCP range is the list of IP addresses that can be assigned to the devices that are connected to your network. Click on Save. Go to Devices. Select Wired Devices. The first device that is going to be adopted is the USG Pro. Click on Adopt. Click on USG Pro. Click on Config icon. I will name it Main Router. I will also upgrade the device. Click on Ports icon. As you can see, it is enabled the LAN 1 port and the 1 1 port. In this drawing, you can see the initial connections of my network. I connected LAN 1 port with a patch cord cable into a switch port. And into 1 1 port, my first VDSL line. I would prefer though to be able to make the interconnection with my switch using the SFP port of the USG. But if you look closer, you will see that 1-1 port is linked with the SFP1 port and 1-2 port with the SFP2 port. Meaning that one port is active only if the corresponding SFP port is empty. So it can only be active either one port or SFP port. So this is what I have actually in mind. I would like to use SFP2 port as LAN in order to make the interconnection with the switch through fiber patch cable. The reason I want to use the fiber patch cable is not because of the bandwidth. This is the US 24250W switch that has two 1 gigabit SFP ports, so the patch cord will give me also the same performance. But using the SFP port my installation will look nicer since the main components of my network will be connected through SFP ports and I can use all the 24 PoE ports of the switch for my access points, IP cameras, VoIP phones, etc. One one port will be used for my first VDSL line, 
and for my second VDSL line I will use LAN 2 port. Finally, I will disable LAN 1 port. Let's make this configuration. First, I will disable LAN 1. With LAN 1 disabled, I will select for 1-2 port, LAN. I will apply the changes. When provisioning is finished, I will turn off everything and I will make the new connections. So, I will connect the second VDSL line into LAN 2 port of the USG. I will remove the patch cord from LAN 1 port and from the switch. I will use the fiber patch cable to connect SFP2 port of the switch with the SFP2 port of the USG. Now I will turn everything on. Let's go back to Unify Controller. As you can see everything looks good, so it's time to add also the second VDSL line as 1-2. Go to Settings, Networks and create new network. The purpose is 1. I will name it 1-2. Network group is 1-2. For simplicity, I will leave connection type to DHCP. For load balancing, I will choose weighted load balance with load balancing weight 40%. This actually means that for network traffic, both VDSL lines will be used with a determined percentage, so 1-1 will be used by 60% and 1-2 by 40%. Click on Save. Click on Devices. Click on main router, click on ports icon and configure interfaces. Select for LAN 2 port 1-2. Click on apply. Everything now looks great. The next step is to adopt the switches. I will upgrade it. Now click on Switch to open the configuration. I will name it Main Switch 1. I will also adopt and upgrade and the second switch. I will name it Main Switch 2. Back to Main Switch 1. Go to Network. I believe that it is a good practice to give static IP addresses to the main components of your network, like the switches. Finally, I will give static IP address to Unify Cloud Key. Select Manage Cloud Key. Sign in. Go to Network. Click on Advanced Configuration. And select Static IP Address. So, that was the initial connections and configuration of a Unify project. After these initial steps, you can add the Unify access points, switches, etc. You can create also VLANs and different SSIDs, but this will be part of another tutorial. Finally, allow me to show you the final result of this project. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my tutorials, consider subscribing to my channel. See you in the next episode.